Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. Now it's time for us to review episode 9, Crimson Sky. So this episode opens with a flashback of Mariego back when she was attempting to run away. She's on her knees in the snow and it is obvious that she just wants to die. We've seen this flashback a couple of times, but this time we can clearly see that she's pregnant. We also discover that this is how she comes to know Father Alvito. The people around her are concerned with how much she yearns for death and enlist Father Alvito to counsel her. Not sure if this this is her introduction to Catholicism, but he gives her a rosary and he prays for her. Blackthorn, Mariko, and Yabushige finally arrive in Osaka. Blackthorn and Yabushige are suspicious to what Mariko is doing there, but she reassures them that it has nothing to do with them. Once in the city, we see a scene between Yabushige and Blackthorn, where Yabushige speaks directly to Blackthorn in Japanese, speaking slowly and using small words. He stops Mariko from attempting to translate, and we see that Blackthorn is starting to acquire a basic understanding of the language, and we love that for him. Mariko reunites with Toronaga's wives, and we learn that Lady Shizu has given birth to a son. And we also learn that his wifeys have been in on the plot this whole time. And we've seen them help move his plot along before. Lady Shizu pretending to have pain and falling to the floor, distracting Ishido's men so that Toronaga and Lady Kiri could switch places in episode three. So his wives love to plot and scheme right along with him and I find that very wholesome. Father Alvito and Father Del Agua go back and forth on whether they think Tornaga is up to something. Alvito believes that he's genuine, especially with what happened with Hirumatsu, which, you know, his little plan is working. But Del Agua is convinced that he can smell something brewing it. He's not wrong. And there's really nothing to talk about in this scene, but Yabushige grunting at Blackthorn while trying to teach him how to present himself to Ishido. Mm. It sent me. Yabushige and Blackthorn run into Kiyama before going in to see Ishido. Kiyama is happy to see his prisoner being brought back and he just cannot wait to have Blackthorn killed. But Yabushige tells him that Blackthorn is going to be an asset to Ishido. We get to see Kiyama speak English or I guess they're actually speaking Portuguese. And he admits that he don't really give a damn about this religious shit. He really about his coin. Finally, everyone has gathered around Yabushige, his betrothed, and the heir. Yabushige unsuccessfully tries to present himself and Blackthorn as assets to Ishido, but they are dismissed. Yabushige looks pretty defeated, but I don't know. I think... Yabushige will never give up on the fight and will always wreck his brain searching for a way out. Suddenly, Mariko comes in looking like a million trillion bucks. And the way she keeps swinging, she was just looking like the most powerful thing in the room, okay? She congratulates Ochiba on her engagement and this is Ochiba. After a little friendly back and forth between Mariko and Ochiba, Mariko announces she will be escorting Lady Shizu and Lady Kiri out of Osaka back to Ido to be with Tornaga. So Ishido obviously, and he's not trying to hear none of that because everybody up in here is a hostage, you just can't admit that out loud. They have a little back and forth and he eventually scolds her for being disrespectful and says that for her disrespect, she's gonna have to go in front of the council so that they can review her behavior. And so she's gonna have to stay put until all of that happens. She says she understands. However, due to her duties to Toranaka, she can't 
put this off any longer and she has to leave when her lord says she gotta leave. So unless she's being held hostage, she's free to come and go as she pleases. She also reminds every single hoe up in that room of who her damn daddy is and her top tier bloodline, meaning she's not to be played with. Like, at this whole time, nobody is translating for Black Lord. And he's just sitting there in suspense, probably catching every other word. And I could just not be him in this scenario. The woman I love is talking real spicy to a man who wants to annihilate her entire clan. And I have no idea what's being said and it's hostile AF. I would be in shock. Anyway, Ishido won't back down and Mariko leaves. In the next scene, we see Yabushige besides himself asking Mariko what the hell she was thinking. And he begs her to just let him in on what Tornaga's plan is. Like, obviously he has one. Tell me, tell me sis. He even suspects that Blackthorn is in on it. But Mariko asks for peace and she's tired. Baby girl just wanna get some sleep. Then we see Mariko meet with her son who is suddenly unimpressed with his mother. He wants her to stay in Osaka. Kiyama has obviously gotten to this little boy's head and he has convinced him that what his mother is doing goes against God in some kind of way. And he tells him that he is now betrothed to one of his granddaughters. And if his mother tries to leave Osaka and bring even more shame to their name, he's no longer gonna be a part of their family. And I would just like to point out, she probably didn't want his little ass in the first place. We just saw her trying to die in the snow while pregnant. So she wasn't really pressed to see him live. You know what I mean? But that definitely hurt her little feelings or whatever. She looked pretty devastated when he walked away from her. So in the next scene, we see Lord Toronaga's folks loading up their caravan with Mariko leading the pack. As they attempt to leave, they are stopped by a handful of palace guards. They inform her that she isn't allowed to leave without a permit. She tries reasoning with them, but they will not back down. Leaving Mariko with no choice but to order her men to kill those men. One of her guys proceeds to chop down two of Ishido's men and announces that Lady Mariko and the other ladies will be leaving this damn castle, okay? While all of this is going on, all the other lords and captives are watching all of this unfold from the top of the castle. Blackthorn and Yabushige are up there and so is the Lady Ochiba. Someone shoots an arrow, taking out one of Mariko's men as they continue to move through the exit. Eventually, all of her men engage in a battle to try to help them get out of the castle, but they're all taken down, leaving only Mariko. She pleads with Lord Kiyama and Lord Ono to order these men to allow her to leave, but they tell her that those are not their men and they're powerless. So then she proclaims that it must be true that they're all being held hostages here. Mariko starts inching towards the gate and with every step she takes, someone shoots an arrow at her feet. This is causing Blackthorn a full-blown heart attack. But it's obvious that they can't harm her. And they say as much when Kiyama shouts out that Lady Mariko cannot be harmed. One of the women in the caravan brings Mariko her naginata and she starts laying in on these men, but obviously to no avail. And how low he thinks she was holding back because Ain't no way she couldn't have killed at least one of them dudes. Mm. But she gives up saying there's no way she can fight through all of these men. And everyone lets out just this collective sigh of relief. <laughs> but Mariko doesn't allow that to last long. She immediately announces that due to these men preventing her from being able to uphold her duties to her liege lord, she's gonna have to take her life at sunset. She turns to Kiyama and asks him to be her second, you know, since that's her brother in Christ. Later, Ishido and the rest of the council meet to discuss what to do about Mariko. They do not want Kiyama to second her, but he feels obligated to her as a Christian. 
None of the men think that she'll actually do it, but Lady Ochiba lets them know that they are very wrong. And she breaks down exactly how happy Mariko would be to end this messed up ass life. When Ishido asks her for advice, she tells him she ain't got none. And simply put, if you let Mariko kill herself, every single high family is going to revolt. And if you don't let her kill herself, you're gonna have to deal with the other hostages demanding that they be set free. Oh my god. And the face that Ishido makes when she says the word hostages. Like, bro, what? She's not allowed to say it out loud? Like, call a thing a thing. So Blackthorn gets summoned to have an audience with the heir with Mariko as a translator. But this is a ruse just so Mariko and Lady Ochiba can talk. The heir running around in the background, he not even paying attention to Blackthorn. He not playing Blackthorn no type of dist at all. That little boy think that man a barbarian. He don't want nothing to do with that man. Anyway, Lady Ochiba wants Mariko to cut the shit. But Mariko like, sis, ain't no shit to cut. I'm just following my orders. And y'all are preventing me from carrying out this very simple task. Lady Ochiba wants Mariko to tell Blackthorn about their childhood and how they grew up as sisters, but their fathers hated each other. She says Mariko was her happiness until the day they sent her away. Aww. Then things start to get a little tense when Ochiba accuses Mariko of wanting to be a martyr, saying all she seeks is destruction. Mariko asks Ochiba if she ever gets tired of living this fucked up ass life, and Ochiba asks what she's supposed to do about that. Just submit to death? Absolutely not. She's gonna play the game until there's no game left to play. She says she exists only to protect her son. And she asks Mariko what killing herself is going to do to protect her own son. To that, Mariko clams right on up and tells Blackthorn, we gotta be on our way. She bows and she cuts on out. Blackthorn <laughs> desperately tries to get Mariko not to follow through with her plan. And I mean, the boy tries everything. He tries throwing Toranaga under the bus by saying he's a coward for letting a woman do his bidding. He tries telling her that she's made her point and she no longer has to prove anything to anyone and that her life is worth more than this. Mariko insists that there is just as much meaning in death as there is in living and she is so right. The consequences for Ishido if Mariko is allowed to commit seppuku would be astronomical. And what Ishido is doing is insane. He needs to be taken down. And if it can't be done due to Toranaga's forces being depleted, this is a less destructive way to get all the other families to see the corruption that's taken place. And we also can't lose sight of the fact that this is what Mariko has been longing for. I am a huge fan of Mariko and I absolutely do not want to watch this woman gut herself. But this is what she's been fighting for. I can sympathize with her position and her desire to escape this hellhole. Next! We see Yabushige's assistant approach him with an offer from Ishido. Ishido will spare his life if he does a little something something for him. Father Alvido goes to Mariko so that she can confess before doing what she about to do, child. The time has finally come for Mariko seppuku ceremony. Everyone has come together in the same way that they did for Todoyoshi. Uh, Fuji's husband. Mariko asks for Kiyama to come forward to be her second, but his bitch ass didn't show up, which means there is no one there to second her. And having no one there to second her means she's gonna have a slow, agonizing, and very painful death. But Blackthorn is there and he knows Mariko's definitely gonna go through with this. So he steps up to second for her, which I loved. I hate everything that's happening, right? I would, I would love, I would love to fight someone over this whole situation, but I love that Blackthorn stepped up for her and he isn't gonna let her die in agony. Mariko readies her dagger. Blackthorn lifts his sword. There's a moment when all we can hear is the sound of her heavy breathing, but that is interrupted by Ishido shouting. I've never been so happy to see that man before, you know? 
I was so happy to see him. But anyway, Ishido interrupts, giving Mariko her permits, allowing her to leave the castle in the morning. And the way Mariko shivers and just falls to the ground and Blackthorn lets out this huge breath of air. I felt that in the very deepest parts of my soul. Like, shit girl, we still here. We still in the game, sis. So naturally, all of this makes them super horny for each other, as near-death experiences usually do. So they promptly have sex in the very next scene. I'm still grossed out by them hooking up, but under these circumstances, you, you go, you go, go get your nut, you know? Fucking Yabushige. Oh. So in the next scene, we see exactly what the something something is that Yabushige has to do for Ishido. Yabushige takes out a few of the guards and lets in some mercenary ass, covert agent ass, shinobi ass ninjas all up in the castle to kill his own people. Like, I, I hate that they make him so likable because he's just, he's so dreadful. And Asano is such an adorable man. Like when I look at him, you can just tell he was the cutest baby. But this character, you just, you just want to strangle him, you know? Just, just watch the life leave his eyes. But look, here's the other thing that complicates things. He is exactly the person they need him to be. Tornaga can't win if Yabushige isn't exactly who he thinks he is. It just sucks that he can't depend on them to be honest. So the Shelby make their way in and start killing folks. Blackthorn, thank goodness, got that thing on him. So he's able to at least help them get into a room that they can lock themselves in. So Blackthorn, Yabushige, Lady Kiri, Lady... What's his other wife's name? Shizu and Mariko are all barricaded in this room together. And they can hear the shinobi getting ready to blow the door. Blackthorn is trying to get Yabushige to help him move some crates in front of the door, probably in an effort to like lessen the blow from the bomb. But Yabushige is freaking out. The man is like paralyzed in fear and he will not move. Mariko calls out to Blackthorn, asking him to just let it come as she goes and puts herself in front of the door in protest of the actions taken by Ishido. <laughs> And this is how episode 9 comes to an end. Like, no. I did not want Mariko to die. You knew that she had to die, though. Like, that was just, like, the overarching theme of the whole show. We knew that this character had to die in order to incite what is going to happen. I never read the book, and, like, I tried not to look into any of the real history, but just watching the actors go on, like, interview circuits, you find out that the character that Mariko is based on, there's, like, a statue of her. So, you know that whatever happens, like, whatever ending comes, is a result of her death. So we knew she was gonna die. Even though I did not want this character to die, and when I thought she was getting ready to commit seppuku, I was like, this is gonna ruin my life. <laughs> I'm about to be so depressed after this. I'm not about to watch this. I wanted to turn it off. I was like, I cannot watch this. I cannot watch this. Not, not two weeks in a row. Come on now, y'all. But the way she actually went out, I was kinda badass. I don't know. I wasn't mad at how she died. Anyway, we only have one episode left. What's gonna happen in episode 10? I feel like episode 10 isn't gonna be very action-packed. I feel like it's just gonna be political stuff. I think we're just gonna see the political fallout of what, you know, happened with Mariko. What I've been nervous about is Tornaga's wives. Because we see that Yabushige survived the blast. I'm assuming Blackthorn's gonna survive the blast as well. But his wives, I hope they looked further back than they were, so hopefully they survived too. But I mean, the shinobi were getting, were attempting to go in there to kill them. So if they blew the door, did they then go and kill the women? 
But also, when they first walked in, you see them walk right past Lady Shizu. Like, they get down low, they see that it's her, and they keep going. So they were specifically targeting Mariko, which doesn't make any... I just don't get it. She was going to kill herself? Why didn't you just let her kill herself if you was just going to go kill her? That doesn't make any sense. Unless her killing herself would have made a bigger impact than y'all blowing her up. Anyway, so how y'all feeling about this being the last episode? We just got one more left. Y'all gonna be sad? I don't even care. Ooh, mm -hmm. Thick, thick. So I'm definitely gonna be doing reviews for um, Diary of a Vampire. And I'll wait for that to come back out. I was obsessed with that show when it first came out. I think I'm gonna do a recap of season one just to get caught up, like in just one video. I'm gonna start doing movies. The first movie I'm gonna do is Akira. So look out for that. That'll probably be dropping either before or after I do episode 10. Anyway, I hope you guys liked this review. If you did, make sure you like, subscribe, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.